It was the final showdown before the Iowa caucuses. The GOP presidential candidates debated one last time ahead of next month's contest. And while Newt Gingrich is leading Republicans in most polls, a new Rasmussen report shows him trailing President Obama by 10 points. Now that led to some to call into question Gingrich's electability. During last night's debate, each of the candidates explained why they could win the caucuses and the general election. I think it's fair to say that my commitment to discipline, systematic work uh, is, is fairly obvious. You know, people just have to decide. Part of the difference is I do change things when, when conditions change. And part of the difference is I strive for very large changes and I'm prepared to really try to lead the American people to get this country back on the right track. And that's a very large change. Something different to offer. I emphasize civil liberties. I emphasize a pro-American foreign policy, which is a lot different than policemen of the world. I emphasize, you know, monetary policy and these things that the other candidates don't uh, don't talk about. As we present the contrast of someone who's been a strong conviction conservative, you know where I stand. You can trust me because I've been there and I've done it. I spent my life, my career in the private sector. I understand, by the way, from my successes and failures what it's going to take to put Americans back to work with high paying jobs. I can debate President Obama based upon that understanding and I'll have credibility on the economy when he doesn't. People wanted to know who could they trust. They knew that in me they may not always agree with me but they knew that I was a woman who said what she meant and meant what she said and they respected that level of authenticity and sincerity. You know there are a lot of folks that said Tim Tebow uh, wasn't going to be a very good uh, NFL quarterback. Uh, there are people that stood up and said well he doesn't have the right throwing uh, mechanisms or he doesn't you know he's not playing in the game right and uh, you know he won two national championships and that looked pretty good we were the national champions in job creation back in Texas and so but am I ready for the next level let me tell you I hope I am the Tim Tebow of the Iowa caucuses I'm not gonna pander I'm not gonna contort myself into a pretzel to please any audience I'm in front of and I'm not gonna sign those silly pledges and you know what else I'm not gonna show up at a Donald Trump debate and joining us now with more is CBSNews.com's political reporter, Lucy Madison. Thanks for being with us, Lucy. Thanks for having me. All right, so the candidates were defending their electability. Is there some doubt, though, creeping in that these candidates, what the Republicans are putting out there, whoever that person may be, may not be able to beat Barack Obama? I think that's been a concern from the get-go among Republicans. I mean, they've been through basically the entire cycle of Republican candidates in this campaign. And... They're struggling to find to find to get behind either Mitt Romney or Newt Gingrich. Gingrich is the front runner now, but I think the Republican Party and leadership have grave concerns about putting him up against President Obama. Meanwhile, Romney has not really been able to break out of the 20th percentile in the polls among Republicans. I think that voters haven't been able to fully get behind him, and that's a concern. But at the end of the day, the Republicans are going to try and do their best to rally behind whoever the candidate is. Yeah, you know, we keep talking about Gingrich and Romney, but Ron Paul is making a bit of a surge now. You know, he is near second in some of these polls. Why do you think that is? You know, he has a really strong base in Iowa particularly, which is where he tends to be doing well. Um, he also has a really strong network of fervent supporters. People love Ron Paul. He has been, he's had a really vehement um, group of fans for a long time. He has a lot of money and he has he's pretty well organized in a lot of these states. So I think that his message, even if it only catches on with a, you know, a small-ish group of people, um, they care so much. They're going to turn out at the, at the polls on January 3rd in Iowa if it's raining, if it's snowing, mm -hmm. if, you know, against all odds. And I think that really could work in his favor. Well, this is what, the 13th debate now. We've seen a <laughs> lot of them and little nuggets come out of them. I think something that uh, a lot of people may be talking about out of this one is the fact that Rick Perry thinks that he could be the Tim Tebow of this. Oh, yes. What is that all about? <laughs> well, he did do a good job tonight. I think he showed that he you know, he, he's trying to make a comeback, and he certainly seemed more confident than he has in recent debates. Um, he was willing to kind of, he was stronger on his attacks. He made a swipe at Newt Gingrich that I thought was pretty spot on, and he, he just seemed confident. He seemed to have his groove back a little bit. Whether or not that's going to be enough for him to, you know, 
come from way, he's pretty far down in the polls yeah. at the moment. It, it'll take a lot for what him to. What do you think is causing that? Because there was some talk that maybe he had some back problems that was ailing him and he, sure. you know, was kind of focused on that and other things in these other debates. Uh, I mean, what do you think it is? I think in previous debate performances, almost from the get-go, he, he just didn't seem confident. He stumbled a lot. He, he gave a speech in New Hampshire that was so kind of out there that people asked if he was on drugs right. or if he was drunk and you know far be it for me to say what was what caused this lapse in his you know confidence which was something that come back. tonight I think we did mm -hmm. I think he really showed that he wants to give this one last try all right, well, let's get to the business of Washington because Congress is very close to a deal on this uh, renewal of the payroll tax sure. cut. Uh, what's the tipping point here? You know, honestly, I think Congress wants to go home. <laughs> they did not want to get in this another fight over a government shutdown. That would have made them, I mean, they're polling abysmally. People are not happy with Washington. They're not happy with Congress. I think... Gridlock and all of that. Mm -hmm. They just want something to get through, get the business done. They want something to get, they want the business to get done. And I think that Congress couldn't have overcome another near government shutdown. I, they never were going to let it get that bad. I mean, I don't think the government was ever actually at risk of shutting down. Um, I think at the end of the day, they must have just gotten in a room and said, we're going to do both of these things. We can, you know, Republicans and Democrats hammered out a deal mm -hmm. to kind of save, save their reputations a little bit, if yeah. possible, at this and point. And go home for the holidays. And, and go home to their family, <laughs> which All they right. really wanted to do. Well, CBSNews.com, Lucy Madison, thanks so much. We appreciate Thank you coming you. on the show. Thank you. Great to be here.